Hello Virtual Pilots. This is Jet Power 1960 and uh, this is the very first uh, video, audio video for me for 2024. Hopefully it will be a lot more. Uh, I have some friends that are interested in getting into um, virtual flying like we are. Uh, especially with the 737 Zebra mod and uh, X-Plane uh, 12 and also 11 too. So I told them that I would like to share uh, the things that I've learned. Uh, I'm a private pilot, instrument rated. Um, I love uh, jets and uh, work for an airline for 27 years. I'm retired now. Uh, but this is where uh, it all started, right here at LaGuardia Airport. And uh, uh, so my, as I was talking to my friends, uh, just letting them know they had a lot of questions they wanted to start flying immediately and I said you know well first you need to understand and uh, know the airplane so this is what I wanted to do I wanted to introduce them slowly into the airplane and then um, uh, there's so much material out there uh, on the internet uh, especially on YouTube and in the forum for uh, X-Plane uh, that you know you can really grasp and and that's how I started little bits and pieces here a lot of reading in the um, um, flight manuals that uh, Boeing put out and and also you know uh, I have pilot friends uh, that I was able to get um, flight manuals to study and things like that and I just it's just uh, very intriguing so I just wanted to start off with just the basics and the basics really is the uh, understanding where the uh, reading the checklist that's the most important thing that's what my instructor uh, really stressed was the uh, understanding and knowing the checklist so we're gonna start there okay so we're inside the airplane now and um, if you're new to the uh, Zebo mod the first thing that you really want to do is to set up the aircraft um, the way that it will handle. Uh, down in the link uh, Nico from uh, Sky Mat Matrix uh, he had produced um, an EFB model and and how the way that you walk through it it's great and uh, there also is an EFB uh, manual uh, set for this that you can read and, and uh, start setting up the airplane the way that you want it. So I have mine set up a certain way, pretty much just like Nico. Uh, you just go to the configures and setting up all of the features. I'm not going to go through that right now, but I'm going to put the link below and, and I suggest that you read it. And what I did was I had it on my tablet, so as I had the airplane up, I was able to uh, read it along with resetting and understanding what, what was going on. Uh, so, uh, but what I'm going to do here is just, uh, we're just going to go through the, uh, just the primary checklist. So, we'll go and as you can see what they developed uh, in the uh, mod is that as you can see the battery switch is, is flashing. Well, the reason that it's flashing is that um, they've um, put in a tool to help you find it. So, let's see if we can find it. So you see that arrow right there? It's perfect. So that's going to be your battery switch. Once you hit that battery switch, now you have uh, battery power going to the airplane. And from that point on, uh, you can go to the guard is closed, and it just tells you exactly what to do. Uh, the GPU or the APU, you have a choice. You can either start the APU. Uh, I usually just go for the GPU to save fuel. So let's just go back up here. Here's the arrow. Here's the arrow for the, the GPU, the ground power unit. And here is the switch for the auxiliary power unit, which is nicknamed the APU. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and switch the GPU on just to save fuel. Now the airplane has power. Okay, the next one is going to be the IRS, the Inertial uh, Navigation System. And that's going to, let's see where we find that. You want to make sure it's off and then you put it on Nav. So 
So you got two arrows up here. They both are off. So now we want to put them on nav. First you have a line and then nav. A line and then nav. You want to go in the order left and right. Okay. Now you heard that that uh, ding or chime. Let's just go ahead and, and scratch that off. The reason that you got that chime is that the FMC is asking you to enter the IRS position. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to come back to it. We're going to keep on going. And let's see the voice recorder. Let's go up here and see if we can find it. There it is. So you want to turn that switch on. You know, voice recorder, um, it plays uh, once target to record the pilot's conversation in the aircraft and also on the radio. So we want to check that off. Uh, the flight deck access, you want to make sure that the guards are, are uh, closed or open. Let's just check and see where we have that. And it's going to be right there. So that's the door lock. You want to make sure uh, that uh, It's on the auto, and most most likely, usually, when you start the airplane, the door is open. And you just want to look over here, make sure it's open, and make sure that the the uh, the guard is secured, and the switch is on. So we come back over here, we check that off, and and like I said, this is so efficient because you don't want to leave any switches or um, knobs or anything like that left alone as you fly because then you're going to have some problems when you get in the air. <coughs> and this is what all the pilots do. This is required. Uh, here I, I'm in the United States and so this is what the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, requires for all pilots. Even in the small airplanes like the 172s that I fly and also the uh, uh, Piper uh, Cherokee 140s. Uh, emergency equipment. Let's just check and see where that's at. Oh, I hit the switch before. I didn't mean to hit that switch. So emergency equipment. Well, of course you have a, a fire extinguisher over here. And then if you go a little bit higher, you get the emergency um, escape rope. In the event of a fire or something like that, uh, the airplane is on the ground. They'll pull that. The pilots has one on each side. They'll pull that uh, uh, to escape the the aircraft. Okay, so let's go ahead and check that off. The ELT light switch, uh, ELT emergency locator transmitter. The box usually is in the back of the airplane. Um, in an orange box, and it's uh, a flight recorder. Uh, excuse me, it's not the flight recorder. It's the um, a switch that, um, on impact, uh, it it targets itself, and uh, search and rescue can find the airplane. It uh, transmits on um, uh, 121.5, and usually when you're flying on long hauls, you may want to have one radio set to that frequency in the event that there is an emergency and that's usually in real life. Uh, I believe the military is 243.0 uh, and that switch is just right up here. You can target it to make sure that um, it's reset or armed but you just want to make sure that the uh, the cap is the, the uh, guard is on. Okay. Uh, passenger service unit so that the passengers can get oxygen uh, in the event of a decompression uh, in the cabin. So let's see where the arrow, the arrow has it right here. It's actual light. Um, I haven't seen come on so I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. Okay, uh, the GPS light right up here. That light right there. And you basically, if you want to see what these lights are, I usually like to reset the uh, 
you just hit that test light. Let's go back up and see the GPU. Here's the uh, PSUE right there. It's lit. Uh, the uh, GPS light. So when you, you want to do a light test to make sure that you know everything is, is flashing and, and uh, is going okay. But I just wanted to put that on so you can see it. Uh, the inner phone, we just want to make sure that it's off, which is right there. Uh, the next one, which is the engine panel, they're usually set already. So you just want to make sure that they're on. There's uh, flip switches here, you can do the alternate or on. And like I said, usually when you're starting the flight, it's already on. You just want to verify that it's on. Uh, passenger oxygen, you want to make sure that the guard is covered and it's right here. It is open. You got normal and then you got on. So it's already set in a normal position. Uh, passenger oxygen light, and you want to make sure that that is uh, distinguished, that it's not on. And there it is right there. Okay, the landing gear light. Okay, and interesting, uh, you have uh, three, six. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. And you want to make sure that everything's in the green. If anything's red, you better call maintenance and uh, have them come check it out. Uh, the flight recorder, the guard, that's going to be up here. Here's the arrow pointing and basically you just want to open the guard make sure it's visible and then close it next thing is the stall warning test so you got two buttons here you have one for the captain and one for the first officer side uh, but they both uh, trigger for both they have backups and you want to scratch that off. Uh, the manual gear extension door. And that's going to be your panel down here. Now make sure that when you open this door, be careful. I remember one time I, I was doing a flight and I was doing a checklist and I accidentally touched the um, one of the levers and the gear wouldn't come up when I retracted it so <laughs> make sure you don't touch these guys here but you can just open the door when they're when they're deployed it'll pop up when you it's like pulling up a, a lever so you want to make sure that that's closed okay and then the parking brake you want to make sure that the parking brake is set okay and so that's your primary right and which is really cool uh, that's the first stage uh, so now you now you know that the airplane is just warming up all the instruments are warming up the gyros uh, things uh, of such uh, and then uh, you move to the next one and uh, this is going to be the CDU pre-flight procedure so you want to verify the model so we have that here and the first officer has one also Let's go ahead and clear that. You want to hit the FMC button. You want to verify the model 737-800 uh, whiskey and dot one. You want to make sure that you have the correct uh, uh, nav page or the nav data. Uh, I usually get a subscription from uh, Navigraph. As you can see, it's uh, started at January and it'll finish uh, February uh, of this month, 20, the 21st. Uh, 2024 and then it'll recycle itself and then you know I have to get another subscription but it's really good to have too if you if you're able to to uh, to purchase it there's a subscription to it so sometimes I like to put in uh, LaGuardia this is LaGuardia so I may put in the aircraft uh, uh, airport location 
and you can use this number but to be more accurate since the uh, GPS is already located where I'm at I go down to to the next page and I put in the GPS uh, left side which is for the captain it goes right into the scratch pad and then I go back up to the previous page and then I insert it into the IRS position so now the satellites know exactly where I'm at and where I'm sitting in the airplane and I just move here's the date and the time and I just move right over to the next page I clear that message there oh, I could just put LaGuardia up here okay so now it's asking to we did we verify the, the model uh, the engine rate let's just go back here go back to the main menu FMC and uh, the model 737800 uh, the engine and we want to make sure we have a, a, six, a 26k and that's thrust per uh, per side two engines and we did the nav data base uh, we did the uh, time and initial page and we set the IRS position through the GPS. The little arrow over here with the big arrow will take you to the next page. We put in the origin. We entered that already. Uh, if we're going somewhere, um, you just put into the next route, which is right down here. You just hit that button. Uh, if you're going to LA, you know, KLAX, you just drop that. Oh, I forgot the A. You just drop that right up here. Now, which is really cool with this Zebo mod, uh, Zebo has uh, developed a system where if you have SimBreathe, and that will probably be the next video, you can hit this button here, uh, Flight Plan Request, and your flight plan will come right into, it'll populate right into the FMC. Now, you need. Um, the SimBrief downloader in order to integrate that information into the Zebo mod or you can just when you go to the website and I'll show you the next video when you go to the next site uh, the uh, website for um, SimBrief it'll ask you if you want to download and it'll give you different locations and one is the Zebo mod which is very very convenient So right here we're going to hold off because this is where we're going to go back to SimBrief and I'm going to show you how to do that uh, flight plan and how to integrate it into the Zebo mod system with the, with the air service that uh, Zebo has developed, which is a great system. All right, get back to you guys later. I hope you enjoyed this one. Hit the like button and let me know if there's anything that I uh, missed or if there's anything else that you would like to see. Uh, me perform on the aircraft to help us to fly together. Alright, see you soon.